Welcome to the Cross Border Interviews. I'm your host, Chris Brown. And before we get into today's episode, I want to say this. In 2019, when we started this uh, the show, we made a pledge to ourselves to sit down with someone from each province in our Confederation of Canada. And today, we are finalizing that. Today is our... First guest from the province of Prince Edward Island, and it, it completes all 13 provinces and territories in our Confederation of Canada. So I'm pleased to, and honored to welcome our first Prince Edward Islander guest and the town of Cornwall councillor, uh, Corey Frizzle, to the show. Councillor Frizzle, Corey, welcome to the show. Thanks, Chris. Uh, happy to be here. And uh, yeah, looking forward to the chat. I am too. As I said, this is municipal series where we're sitting down with a lot of councillors and mayors and Reeves from across our great country to talk about municipal politics, but also your duty to serve. So let's get the first question out of the way. And Corey, where'd your sense of duty to serve come from? My sense of duty, um, I come from a family of, of civil servants. Um, on, on my mom's side, she was a nurse. My my grandmother was a nurse. Uh, my father's side, uh, my my grandmother was a a, a teacher. Um, grandparents were were heavily involved in in the church community out here in Cornwall. Um, and then I I have a extensive uh, family of of cousins and aunts and uncles and and uh, a lot of them are are involved in politics and and you know uh, that's kind of how I got uh, interested in it and stuff and and from there um, you know obviously generated a a passion and, and strong interest and desire in me to to serve uh, citizens of, of, of my town. Um, I also work for, for the government of Canada, my day job, and, um, you know, obviously volunteer in several other capacities in, in, in the town. So I have a, yeah, I, I have a bug to um, to serve the community, so. So it sounds like politics was discussed at the table uh, when you were growing up, because I can, can't imagine someone, like you said, who has an extensive background with family members in politics, it wasn't discussed at the dinner table. Was it more provincial and federal politics or was municipal politics discussed as well? Um, so I, I grew up in Cornwall and the, and the town that I, I serve in now, um, and, and we, Cornwall amalgamated with, with some other communities, uh, in like 1996, I think it was. So, so, so I, I was in high school and stuff, uh, by that point. So leading up to that, it, it was mostly provincial, uh, discussions and stuff. Um, a, a cousin of mine, uh, here in PEI. Uh, Ron McKinley is, is, is like one of the longest serving uh, provincial MLAs in Canadian history. So so Ronnie had a big presence in our community and obviously in my family and, and being related to him. And he's kind of actually one of the one of the leading causes of, of me to be uh, to be interested. I, I, I volunteered in, in his campaigns growing up and uh, very close friends with with his son, Jeff. And um, yeah, so so mostly provincial politics to answer your question, Chris. But but of course, uh, anybody that's interested in politics, we 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 uh, we we chomp at the bit for for any bit of discussion on politics, whether it's federal or provincial, or or municipal. So yeah. So what happened between helping out on uh, your cousin's campaign to deciding in 2009, I'm putting my name <laughs> forward because that's a big leap. And many people say, okay, I want to be the guy in the back room, but you said, no, I want to be the guy yeah. at the table making the decision. <laughs> what happened in 20 2009 that made that decision for you? Oh my goodness. Um, well, I can tell you there, there's probably a series of, of things throughout my life that, that, kind of propelled me in, into uh, becoming an elected person. Um, obviously the teachers, uh, junior high teachers, high school teachers teaching history, uh, political science, uh, social studies, economics. Uh, Rupert Stewart was probably my first uh, political science teacher at, at, at Bluefield High School and, and um, what what really got me interested was was, was instances of injustice, instances of of people being wronged, 
instances of, of the system not being fair. Um, and that drove me crazy. And I, I, I hated to see it. I, I hate to see it now. And, and, um, you know, so, and so, so that, 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 um, th those feelings, uh, moved me a little bit. Um, also when I was in high school, there was the Quebec referendum. Um, I think it was in grade 11 or something. So, um, again, Rupert Stewart, one of, one of my, my, my teacher will talk about that. And, and, uh, well, one, one day he, he told us, oh, there's, there's, uh, there's buses going from all every, every province in, in Canada to Quebec to protest against this. So, um, me being a little bit mischievous when I was in high school, my friends and I were like, well, listen, let's, let's get on that bus. Let's go to Quebec and let's, you know, try to convince the powers to be to, to stay in Canada. So um, my friend, two, two other friends of mine, the three of us, we, we, we convinced our parents and I don't know why, but they, they drove the, my mom drove us into the get on this bus. Anyway, we didn't make it far. We get on the bus. They were asking for tickets. Obviously we didn't have any tickets, but, um, <laughs> but it's, it's funny because the, somehow the guardian newspaper here, a guy on the bus took a picture of us and there's a picture of us on the bus. Um, so we so it looked like you bus. left. It just, you didn't leave. It, lo it looked like we <laughs> left and, and we were so stupid. We could have had the day off school the next day, but we went to school. Rupert Stewart was like, like, oh my gosh, he was like, I thought you were going to go back. Well, how? And he was like, Liz, I'm proud of you for, for trying. And, and so, so, um, <laughs> that was, that was, that was, uh, that was, uh, probably my, 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 my start, my fail, failure to launch start in, in, in politics back in the day, Chris. So, but, so in 2009, locally, though, there must have been an issue that was going on that you said, I believe yeah. I'm the best person to address. You talk about injustice. Was there an injustice yeah. going on in town, uh, the town of Cornwall, or was it just so, uh, overall injustice yeah. that you saw that you wanted to get involved locally? So I had moved back to Cornwall. Um, my grandfather uh, had a construction company at the time, um, built a house here in, in Cornwall, uh, moved back from living in Charlottetown. And um, previous to that, I, I was in Ottawa and Florida and uh, went to St. Thomas University to get my degree in, in uh, criminology and sociology. So I moved back to Cornwall in 2006. And, and at the time there was um the big issue in, in in the previous election was 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 the building of a town hall people were protesting against it they thought it was too big um fast forward to now it's too small <laughs> so um but i don't think there was any one major issue maybe maybe um oh yeah actually no there, there was there was so um 2006 i moved here 2000 and um 2009, I started to volunteer for uh, for a local sports organization, the Cornwall Timberwolves Football Club. They're a minor football club. Um, and at the time, the town of Cornwall had built uh, this big, beautiful sports complex called the Terry Fox Sports Complex. It's got two turf fields. Uh, a baseball field, a softball field, Toboggan Hill. It's it's like a multi-million dollar gem of, of a facility here that, that we're extremely fortunate to have. Um, but it's time. Uh, so I'm volunteering. Um, we come to find out our, our club gets our, our bill in the mail for the, the field fees. And we were charged $60 an hour as a minor sports club to utilize these this brand new field and um so yeah um i'll i'll never forget this is my my head coach mark mcdougall he's like somebody's got to do something about this i'm like i'll do something about it. I'll, I'll run in this election and and um you know i'll we'll we'll, we'll change it we're like that's crazy like it it and, and it almost bankrupt our, our our club. And uh I was just talking to to the GM of the club last night and she was like, Yeah, we we, we just paid that off a, a couple of years ago. So so that was the big issue that that got me going. And um a lot of people play sports out here. We were we're we're a pretty big sports town and and um yeah, so the, so that would that would have been the main issue, Chris, back in two thousand and nine. So 
we we all remember our first time that we're on the ballot. I remember my first time when I w- ran for municipal council in Ontario, and I can tell you, walking into that ballot box and seeing my name on the ballot was the most <laughs> surreal experience in the world because at least I knew I was getting one vote. Um, for you, though, you seem like an outgoing personal guy. You seem like you were involved in the community. How was it to have people talking about you, talk, seeing your name on signs, if you had some, seeing your names on brochures, and then going in that ballot box and going, oh, what have I done here? I'm putting my name, an X beside my name, and I'm potentially going to be a next town councillor. I, I, don't, I don't know if you ever get used to it. If you do get <laughs> used to it, I, I don't think you should get used to it because it's, it's a very weird uh surreal it's, yeah absolutely it's surreal it's 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 a, a a very unusual thing and and you know it really makes you makes you humbled really like you're 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 seeing your like we have signed like Bob, we have the big four by eight signs i have my i have my mug plastered on that um you know social media stuff flyers brochures uh you're going to the grocery store people are stopping it's it's, it's very unusual but yeah going into that ballot box yeah I, I remember it too i was like oh wow like this is this is real like this this is legit like um people are going to either believe in me and, and what i'm saying or or they're not and and that'll be the end of my political career so um but yeah, I, I've been in. Uh, that was my first campaign, and in, in, in 2010, I'm, I've campaigned. Uh, I guess I just finished my 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 fourth. Um, 2010, 2014, 18, and and, and 22. So um, yeah, you you never. It doesn't get, get it, easier. So. Does it get easier? <sighs> it, it gets. It's different. Um, we're a really fast growing community here in, in, in Cornwall. Um, when I first ran, I think we were less than 3000. Now we're, we're around seven. We're over 7,000. Wow. We've grown. We're the, we're the fastest growing, uh, municipality over 5,000 people in PEI. And, um, we're actually the 14th fastest growing municipality over 5,000 in all of Canada. Um, so the demographic changes, uh, the socioeconomic, uh, con, you know, concerns change. Uh, it's a very big municipality where we have an open ward system here in, in Cornwall, um, which is challenging. Um, we're, we're almost, this, we're, we're about 90% of the size of a provincial MLA district here. So it's a great big, it's a big area. It takes a lot of time to campaign um, if you want to knock on every door. And I've done that um, almost every election. Um, but yeah, the, the, you get used to, you, you build relationships with, with a lot of the community folks here. And but this election, we, we've had a, a lot more um, uh, apartment buildings, uh, multi-unit dwellings. So, so we have some of those people here now that, that, you know, aren't, uh, you know, first generation Cornwallians, if I can use that term. So, yeah. I want to go back to 2010 for a second here. Yeah. And you, you, you moved back in 2006, you put your name forward in 2009, you're elected in 2010. I'm assuming you have an idea of what's going on in your community. I have, I, I believe that you probably have a pulse of what the issues are in your community. In that election, or even in any election since 2014, 18, or 22, do you go to doors and then get shocked about what people talk to you about? Because I can imagine you you believe you have an idea of what this, the community needs, but when you talk to people, you learn from their experience and what they're actually looking for. Was there things in 2010 that you said, I didn't think this was an issue and I'm glad you brought it to my attention because we can try to address it if elected? Yeah, looking back, so after every election, I, I compile, um, I keep notes when I go to the door, obviously, I'll, I'll write something down. Um, and then I compile those notes at the end of the election and, and give those to the to the CAO. The past four elections, um, most of the stuff's been pretty similar. It's, you know, people want to keep property taxes low. People want their water and sewer stuff to be low. Um, what what is to answer your question? What what is surprising sometimes um, is the level of understanding that some citizens have about 
who I am, who I'm like as a counselor, what my roles and authority and responsibilities are. Um, so sometimes people will think, oh, well, they'll ask me questions about healthcare or, or um, you know, things that are outside the purview of, of um, municipal governments. So um, immigration, you know, healthcare. I had yeah. a counselor from no, uh, New Brunswick on last week, and they were talking about someone talking about the war in Ukraine and what their thoughts on the war yeah. in Ukraine is. So are you saying yeah. that as a local uh, a counselor, you have to be kind of knowledgeable in all levels of government issues because you might have to address them? Oh, yeah, yeah, you do. I like you should be able to speak on any social issue happening, and and if you can't, you're you're probably not in 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 the right profession and stuff. So so sometimes that would be surprising, right? People in 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 20 uh 2014, uh, I had a lady ask me about abortion and 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 stuff like that. So so those things would would are are, are sometimes surprising. Um, but but you know the municipal issues. Not a lot of those are, are are pretty similar. It's property taxes, municipal fees, whether they're facility fees or water and sewer fees, um, you know, transit, recreation. Um, is transit a big issue out in Cornwall? Is transit a big issue? Yeah. So so it's it's when I came on in 2010, the transit system was just starting. Um, we had extremely low the nobody was riding the bus um and it was extremely high um uh, fee for for the town to um the town to pay we, we, we almost pulled the plug and and um and thank goodness we didn't um i i was one of the counselors that that was ready to pull the plug because just nobody w w was using it um but fast forward to now and it's 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 extremely high it's uh, the 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 ridership's off the charts um, I'm, I'm the chairperson of the, the finance and municipal services committee that that falls under and, and I'm looking forward to, to having some conversations with our, our stakeholders and partners and, and trying to expand that service. Um, we need we need more routes, we need them to go down uh, into different neighborhoods so it, it's 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 being used a, a lot more than it than it has been in the, in the past so re record setting numbers and stuff so yeah. I want to turn to the role of the counselor here, because um, unless I'm mistaken, your job as town counselor for the town of Cornwall is a part time job. You may work full time yeah. hours, even more than full time hours sometimes. Have yeah. you found a balance since 2010 to balance that personal life and uh, counselor life? Because <laughs> I can imagine you don't want to go to the grocery store as counselor Frizzle every single time. You want to just go as Corey. So how do you yeah. balance the needs and the wants of your community against the needs and the wants of private Corey? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think private Corey really exists. Um, <laughs> I, 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 I think... Um, you know, when, when you get elected, um, you know, that you, you're, you're opening yourself up to, to a position where it's a 24, seven, 365 job, um, your, your, your needs and wants and, and, uh, desire for privacy is, is, is out the door, uh, as far as I'm aware. So everything like you you never stop being a counselor um, so, or whatever any any public figure whether you're elected or you know a sports figure or 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 you know somebody in the church or or what have you um, if the citizens put you there then you, you know you need to serve them and you need to serve them based on their wants and needs uh, not not your your own. Um, obviously there's going to be times where you're, you know, um, on vacation or, or, or something like that, or, you know, my, my wife's had two kids during, during the time I, I, I've been serving and stuff. So obviously there's going to be some of that and stuff, but, um, you know, when you go to the grocery store, you're going to be, uh, I don't, I, my, my wife doesn't send me too often. She'll go because she knows that it's, it's probably going to be a, a 30 to 60 minute, uh, outing and stuff. So, but that's what you signed up for. And, and, you know, if, 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 if you don't want that, you're, you, you know, 
you should look for a different position because but can you say no to people can you say not right now here's my business card i'd love to chat with you about this issue but i'm sitting down <laughs> to a dinner with my wife right now uh i'd love to chat with you tomorrow or are you it seems like you're one of those guys it's like okay let's chat about this now and your wife will then pull out the phone and scroll on the internet or scroll through social yeah. media <laughs> My my poor wife Susie, God love her. She's 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 a saint, and and she's got a, a, a great deal of patience. And and um, thank goodness she's willing to share me with with all of the great citizens of Cornwall. But no, you can't. You don't say. Yeah, I would. I can't imagine ever running into a constituent and then then telling me something. You say, "No, no, I'm 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 busy right now. I can't." Uh, that you would be. Yeah, uh, that that'd be pretty much the end of your political career here in Cornwall. I, I don't know about other jurisdictions, but no. Yeah, you're the first person to say that, so it might be different in all other jurisdictions, but yours. So yeah, um, it's yeah, that's fine though. Going back to that first time you walked into council chambers as a elected official as councillor elect for the town of cornwall is there a moment when you went what have i gotten myself into what have i gotten myself into because now the weight and responsibility of not only my family but my neighbors the people who have elected me are now on my shoulders and the decisions i make and the decisions i put forward at this council chamber are going to affect the pocketbooks the day-to-day -day lives of everyone in my community is there a moment like that for you or do you just go in with an open mind thinking you have to do the best job you have you can i was fortunate enough then it's a question. Yeah, yes, yes, and no. I, I, I was, I was fortunate enough, like I said, growing up, that that I was, you know, I, I had a lot of uh, connections with 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 elected officials. So, so my cousin uh, Ron, um, I spent a lot of time with him um, after um after I, I graduated um from high school I, I went to um upei and then st thomas and both instances I, I was members of of uh the university uh a political uh party at the, the university there the, the university chapter and stuff um from there uh i was fortunate enough to get a position in ottawa working for um the uh, Canadian Minister of Heritage at the time, who was Sheila Copps. So I spent about a year and a half working for Sheila in, in Ottawa and then um, back back here in, in PEI as a regional uh, policy advisor to her. So um, and I, obviously during the, during that time, I was I was around um, uh, my cousin Ron. And, and so I, I understood what the role and responsibility of, of an elected official was. Um, it, it is to spend, you know, taxpayers' money, essentially at, 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 at the bare minimum. That that's that's what we do. We make decisions. We spend taxpayers' money. Um, we we develop public policy. So I, I had a bit of an understanding of that. Where where I think. I uh, was probably surprised a little bit was, was the level of authority and, and responsibility that municipal councillors have. Um, you know, like I didn't really quite grasp the scope, the, the boundaries between municipal, municipal government, provincial and, and, and federal. So, um, you know, we, we spend a lot of money here. Uh, we, we have a lot of money to, to you know, when capital, water, and sewer, and and operating, um, I forget what it, I think it's like fifteen million or something off the top of my head. All, all, all of that wrapped together. So, so we do we 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 have a lot of uh, responsibility, and and we have a lot of decisions and 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 um, you know roles roles to fulfill here in 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 this job. So that was surprising. How important is it for yourself to go into a council meeting with an open mind? Because I can imagine going yeah. in with a decision made up before hearing from residents or hearing from administration is probably quite difficult because I, I come from provincial politics in Ontario as well. And I, I worked for the minister of agriculture there and you, you know, yeah. going into a, the uh, question period or how you're going to vote when you're walking onto the floor as a municipal council, you have to keep an open mind. How important is it for you to keep that open mind 
when hearing from your constituents, but also from what administration is telling you the best path forward is? Yeah, it's crucial. I mean, you can't, you can, and I've, I've gotten better at this. I think in, in my first term, I, I probably didn't have as much of an open mind. I probably wasn't as, uh, you know, pers persuaded uh, on, on certain issues a, a, as I am now. Um, I don't know if that comes with with being, uh, getting, getting older and stuff. I was, uh, I think I was 29 or 30 when I first got elected. So 45 now. So it's, um, but yeah, it's, it's crucial. You shouldn't, if, if you can't be, if you can't be convinced of, of a differing opinion in the face of facts and maybe facts you haven't considered before, like you, you, you're, you're crossing into a conflict of interest boundary there. If, if I can't convince you with all these facts and, and figures that, that you didn't look at before, then, and you know, you're digging your heels in and not like, why are you making that decision? I guess is, is why, what I would be wondering. So, so yeah, you certainly have to have an open mind. Um, I think every elective, everybody should, right. If, yeah. if, uh, uh, you know, looking at society and stuff now, the, the partisan partisanship and, 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 um, you know, uh, people on either end of a spectrum, we need to be open and, and we need to be, um, we need to talk to each other. We, we need to consider differing points of view and stuff. So, yeah. Abuse against municipal officials, elected and staff members has risen dramatically over the past handful of years. And to date, everyone has been dealing with these issues on their own and often on a case by case basis. While we can't eliminate all abuse of officials, we can take steps to mitigate the impact of those instances. On April 27th and April 28th, Strategic Steps Incorporated is hosting a symposium in Edmonton, Alberta, focused on bucking the trend. Attendees will come away with the understanding of fostering a safe space for both administration and council. Learn from industry leaders on how to deal with unsafe and abusive behavior, how to build a supportive team that provides support, and you can walk away with the tools and resources to help avoid abuse in local government. Get your tickets today at buckingthetrend.ca. So I want to turn to the second segment of the show now, and that is the town of Cornwall as a whole. And now before I ask the first question, I want to preface this by saying this is an opinion of the councillor and myself. This is not a direction of council. This is not a policy at council. This is his opinion. We seem to get a lot of emails whenever I ask this question. Um, so, <laughs> Corey, in your opinion, I'm prefacing that with a very loud, in your opinion, what is the biggest issue facing the town of Cornwall today? Yeah, it's it's funny you say that, Chris, because uh, I checked with my CAO, my mayor, before I, I did this, before I agreed to this interview, and they were like, yeah, just make sure they know it's your opinion. <laughs> You're not speaking on behalf of all of council, so so thanks for that uh, preamble. Um, yeah, so like I mentioned before, Cornwall is a, a fast-growing community. Um, we're just west of, of our capital city, Charlottetown, um, across over the North River uh, the North River, uh, the North River Bridge, and and you, you're you're in Cornwall, um, so we're we're a central location here, and and um, we're we're growing quickly, and so the biggest issue facing Cornwall is how we grow, you know, sustainably and and effectively, and um, you know, plan for the future needs of the community as well as addressing the needs of of the residents today. Um, so, um, you know, I can tell you expansion of our, our water and sewer services are, are uh, a, a big issue with us now. We, we just completed a, a, a big project where we built another water, uh, water well field. Um, we're going to be building a, a water tower for that soon. We expanded our um, water lines uh, to provide fire rated water in, in, in the central part of the town. And um, now we're looking at expanding into some of those rural areas of, of town and, and trying to connect our, um, our services, 
Um, Cornwall is pretty much in the shape of a, of a triangle um, uh, with two, uh, we have the Transcanada Highway going through the middle and, and um, collector roads uh, feeding off of that. So, so yeah, so, so growing effectively, um, you know, putting into consideration some of the, the wants and needs of, of, of the community as far as recreation and, and, and transit and, and all those other amenities that, that people want, obviously, and, and trying to do that while, while keeping property taxes uh, at the status quo and, and, and not raising those. So it's, it's, it's a juggling act. And, um, you know, so how is council addressing that right now? So as a counselor, yeah. as council, how are you addressing? Because you, you told me in the middle of this interview that when you were elected, the town of Cornwall was under 3000. Now it's almost doubled that by almost 7,000, mm -hmm. possibly even more as of talking, uh, releasing this episode. How do you balance the growth when the growth is so fast, like 10 years to double your population? That's a pretty short time yeah. period, if you ask me. How do you balance yeah. that as counselors to make sure that the growth doesn't outpace the infrastructure that you have in the town? Yeah, we, we've been fortunate that, that we've had some forward thinking counselors um, during my, my time and prior to me, uh, as well as very capable staff um with, with our town we're, we're a very small municipality i think we probably have 15 to 20 full-time staff but um we're we punch above our weight here um we've done a great job of, of developing effective municipal plans uh whether they're an official plan a main street plan a recreation plan um water and sewer plans and and so we, we've done a really good job of of planning for future needs um that, that water upgrade is one of them um we just did a uh, two big um uh sewer jobs where we uh, extracted the sludge in, in our sewer cells to uh, make room for more capacity so we've we've been ahead of the game a little bit and and planning for this stuff where you know so some other municipalities might have spent their money on on sidewalks and, and splash pads uh we've been a little more practical out here and and um it you know it's, it's paying dividends now so um so so kudos to everybody uh, you know before me and 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 work with me for for that uh, every, everybody in cornwall you know, should be tipping their hat to the to these folks. I'll I'll tell you. I'll give you another another example. We just we just went through Hurricane Fiona here, um, and it knocked out power for I think it was like twenty one days or something. Um, so where where some municipalities, their their sewer system, you know, the the infrastructure wasn't able to operate. We were, and and we were because we bought mobile um, generators that we could power up our lift stations and essentially flush the toilet of a neighborhood. You know, the, the people were able to use their water and sewer during that that whole time. Yeah, so um, so we would we had staff working twenty four hours a day, and they they would go around with this mobile generator was hooked up to the back of a pickup truck, and they would hook it up to to the lift station and and flush the lines. And get into our gravity fed system and, and we were able to keep it operating and stuff so so those kind of decisions they're they're, they're not big and sexy at the time where, where people are like oh my god we bought a portable generator oh, you know but you know if, if your water and sewer isn't working then during the power rate you, you, you're calling me so um so so those decisions have, have been great um and and um yeah yeah great, great uh, okay so, so you mentioned something during that statement that i want to pick up on because you said sidewalks and splash pads now if i go talk to 100 people in the town of cornwall tomorrow and i ask them what their most important issue is they're not going to say growth they're going to say water sewer health care they're going to say that pothole in front of my house they're going to say that sidewalk yeah. that's decrepit they're going to say this that and the other how do you balance what council wants but what the citizens want as well is there a balancing act where you as council have to go okay uh, as much as we need growth, John's street, uh, John's pothole on street X needs to be filled because yeah. he's been calling me every five hours to fix it. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, 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 yeah, that's what we're here for, right? <laughs> we're, we're here to, um, otherwise it would just be the staff running, running the town and they would just do 
you know, uh, what, what they thought need, needed to be done. So, so for us, uh, sometimes situational stuff will, will dictate, well, we're, we, we got to do this now. Um, for example, we're, like I said, we're, we're looking to expand our, our water and sewer system into some areas of, of the town. If we do that, that would be the prime opportunity to also put in an active transportation path, like a, a, a sidewalk, a bike lane. So we would do both of those jobs at the same time, um, you know, the, the scale of economics and stuff. So sometimes situational stuff will, will dictate. And, and then we have to explain that. Well, you know, sorry, Joe, we, we had your street earmarked for, for a sidewalk this year, but we have to do it because of this thing. Most citizens will understand that. They will say, oh, you know, that, that makes sense. So, so that's our role as, as council is to look at, at, at the situation, to look at what, what are the needs and, and, and the environment right now and, and um, you know, how can we make those things jive, the, the wants and needs of, uh, of the citizens and, um, you know, uh, the opportunities that, that lay uh, in, in front of us. So. After your time on councils since 2010, with a brief hiatus in 2014, has it become easier? Has it become easier to look at the bigger picture instead of the individual wants and needs? And I'm going to quote Star <laughs> Trek here, but the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few or the one. So has it become easier to look at the bigger picture when it comes to municipal budgeting, but also municipal growth? Yeah, I think, I don't know if it's because I've gotten older and wiser, Chris, um, <laughs> and I was probably young and, and uh, probably a little too cocky when I was first elected, but yes, it, it is now, where probably my first term, um, I, I would probably dig my heels in and, and, and say, no, I, you know, I want this, we got to have this, and, and, and where now I'm, I'm probably a little bit more pragmatic and stuff, so um but I'll tell you, like this, this council we have now, we we're a group of, of we, we have a lot of skills on our on our council, and um, you know we're, we're all fairly progressive minded people, and and um, most of us have heard the same concerns, right? Like we would all love to have a splash pad, um, you know, down here in Cornwall, but we also know we'll, we got to have water and sewer services connected to expand commercial development and, and residential development. So, um, you know, it's, it's, um, it's, it's balancing act and, and um, yeah. Uh, understandable. I want to turn to our last segment because I'm cautious of time here and I, I know you're a busy man. Um, and that's tourism. It's my favorite part because I'm a tourist and I like touring small communities because you learn more about the small communities from their elected leaders. So, um, Corey, as a tourist who is totally coming through PEI, actually, I am actually this summer in August oh, okay. doing a swing through the Atlantic uh, provinces. What Great. should I be stopping to see? Yeah, so so come to Cornwall. Um, like I said earlier, we we have a multi-million dollar uh, sports complex called the Terry Fox Sports Complex. Um, it's a beautiful facility. Uh, we're going to be getting a new football turf field here. Um, we just upgraded our, our soccer turf, and, and we have a baseball field as well as softball. We have a disc golf course on that facility as well. Um, we have, I think, three kilometers of walking trails there, along with uh, two basketball courts and, and two tennis courts, a beach volleyball court. And, and we also partnered with, with a local private um, company, um, and we also have a ropes course, um, a three-tiered uh, ropes activity course there as well. So, so that's a big feature that, that we have here in Cornwall. Um, we also have lots of restaurants. Um, Sam's restaurant in Cornwall probably makes the best uh, uh, cheeseburger and, and shawarma. And, and uh, I just had one of their steak sandwiches last night at, at, at a, at a, after a council meeting. So um, and we have dairy bars, uh, you name it. We're also surrounded uh, by water on, 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 on three sides. And that's an area where we have, uh, our, our council has a, a strong desire to 
uh, enhance our, our waterfront. Um, so that's something I'm hoping that this council will will look at and, and plan effectively. Um, we're, we have two rivers on, on either side of it. I, I live on, on, on the West River um, and then um, a, a little bit east is, is, is the North River and then Charlottetown and stuff. So I can, I can jump on a paddleboard um, out in front of my house and paddle into, um, you know, Charlottetown in, in about 45, 60 minutes. So, um, so it's, 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 we, we there, there's a, a golden opportunity there for us to identify some, you know, a, a beach access, a, a waterfront access and, and, and enhance that into a park and stuff. So I'm, I'm hoping that's something that, uh, that we can do soon and, and, and maybe attract some more tourists. Uh, I live right beside KOA campground and, and this place is rocking in, in, in the summertime. Uh, it's a beautiful campground. It's, it's uh, very, very popular. Um, uh, Donna Sentner, uh, the, the manager over there, uh, runs, runs the place and then the a local family, the great group owns it and operates it and stuff. So uh, great place to come to in, in the summer. It's packed. Um, and, and all our folks go down to, to, uh, goods independence there to get your groceries and stuff. And, and, uh, yeah, well, I'm looking forward to KOA because the RV can park there when I'm bringing it through this summer. Listen, you, you park there, Chris, you, you send me a text, I'll hop the fence and I'll, uh, I'll go have a beverage there with you. Awesome. But what about yourself though? After a stressful day at council, after a stressful day at work, where do you go in the town of Cornwall to decompress? And I should preface this by saying you can't say your own house because every council <laughs> I've talked to usually says their house. But is there a place in the town of Cornwall that you can go and you can just relax Absolutely. and decompress? Absolutely, Chris. I'm, I'm gonna. The, you're, you're gonna notice a theme here. I'll, I'll, I, w I would probably be going to the Terry Fox Sports Complex. Um, like I said, well, one of the reasons I I, I, I ran for council um, back in uh, 2010 was, was to. Um, uh you know uh, lower the, the the field fees increase uh access to to municipal recreation facilities um i've, I've been coaching football for a number of years and um uh so passion of mine I, I i love it uh both my kids play my my 13 year old son cones uh, a, a starter on on the uh the under 14 football team here with, with the Timberwolves. We just won the, the provincial championship uh, back in November. Um, so it, it's it's one of the most beautiful places in, in anywhere I've ever been. Um, beautiful field, uh, huge, huge backdrop of, of farms and, and horses running. Uh, and, and, and the farm fields just adjacent to, to the complex. And, and it's a, it's a beautiful, magical place. And, and there's nowhere I'd rather be in the whole world than, than on that football turf field, uh, coaching, coaching some kids. So. Um, you, you painted an amazing uh, picture of your community, but I want to ask, because I've asked every single politician, municipal politician, what makes your community so unique though? What makes it so unique to raise a family, to work and to play? Yeah, really, it, it, it's the people, Chris. We're, we're, a, we're a humble group of people here. Um, we're very hardworking. Um, most of the folks here in, 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 in Cornwall um, have lived here for, for a, a number of years, but now we're, we're, we're also getting some, some newcomers and, and we're, we're getting a nice balance of diversity mixed with... Um, mixed with people that have that have been here a long time but um people come here to live in Cornwall because they don't want to live in other municipalities in PEI and and they want to be close to the amenities of, of Charlottetown but they don't want to be in there um they want that kind of rural setting and and um you know to live in a close-knit community where you know pretty much everybody knows knows who everybody is um so with that you know you get a certain type of people and 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 people you know there's nobody here that that you know has any airs or or uh, uh, you know think they're better than anybody else. We're we're, we're pretty down to earth and stuff. So um, I love it here. I'm, my family's been in this town since um, you know the 1800s. My 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 uh, paternal grandfather was, was the blacksmith, um, the the town blacksmith here, and and. Uh, 
uh, on my mom's side, uh, they they worked in public service and stuff. So, so my family's been here a long time, and and we, and we love it. And and it's it's I think it's the best town in in, in the world. And uh, I wouldn't want to live anywhere else. And and I would encourage everybody to to you know come here, check it out, and and if you like it, to stay. And um, it, it's going to be an exciting place to to live in the next uh, few years. We're we're going to be growing and expanding and. Uh, getting a lot more services and stuff. So, yeah. Awesome. Um, Council Frizzle, I want to thank you so much for sitting down out of the last 45 minutes out of your day and talking about the town yourself and you do deserve. So thank you so much. Thanks for having me, Chris. We Re- really appreciate it. Good, good stuff for, for you and your team for, for doing this stuff. It's, uh, it's great to be able to share what, what counselors do and, and, and kudos to your team. Well, thank you. So with that, I want to remind everyone, get off social media, go put it down and go have a conversation with somebody. Helps our society, helps our democracy and helps us be a better people at the end of the day. This has been the Cross Border Interviews with Chris Brown. Have yourself an excellent day. And remember everyone, keep talking.